today. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the RuPaul's Drag Race After Show right here on the stream.tv. We are live, so make sure you join in on our conversation. If you're in our chat room, invite a friend or two to join the conversation with you as we dish about this fierce, fabulous episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. So let's get right into it. The library is now open. <laughs> I love this episode uh, because I always love when they get to read each other mm -hmm. and Rue comes in with the glasses and she says the library is open but um, we'll get to more of that in a second but first let's talk about the reactions to Trixie's uh, return um, how do you guys feel about Trixie making her triumphant return she should have never left she should have never no. left. Yeah. It's unfair. She did good in the last challenge. I think Miss Fame shouldn't have been sent home this episode. She should have been sent home about four episodes, five episodes back. Right. But Justice for Trixie. Justice for yeah, Trixie was I served. Mean, I'm, I mean, we all wanted her, Trixie back. We got Trixie back. And she seems to be staying. So that's great. Now, I read somewhere that uh, the reason why Trixie might have been eliminated was because her... Uh, Snatch Game character was very controversial. Did you guys see that oh. anywhere? Yeah. I, I, I saw the article come up, but I didn't fully read it. But I did see Trixie as um, Anne Frank. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I don't know. Is one I didn't of the, see it. It's so one I of those can't... moments where you, you don't know whether you should laugh or if you should be like, oh, girl, no, don't do it. But don't at, do it. But at the end of the day, Every season has a queen that has to change their character at the last minute. Yeah. And it would have been no different for Trixie. Yeah. I mean, they would have told her from the beginning, if it was in her audition tape, don't do Anne Frank. There you go. She got yeah. sent home like two episodes before Snatch Game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, they could have they just stopped that. I mean, that's what producers do. They could have just been like, no, you can't do Anne Frank. Well, one person who is not happy about Trixie's return is Miss Fane. She <laughs> made that very clear uh, after... And that the didn't elimination. Help her. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing about Miss Fame. If I was Miss Fame with her track record in this competition, always on the bottom, never doing good, I would shut the fuck up and yeah. just, you know, be like, okay, at least I'm safe this week. At least I'm safe this week. I have an I have an option to show myself next week. But you know what? Shut up. They let her back in. Well, well see, I think if you think that you're doing amazing, which Miss Fame does think True. that she's doing amazing, mm -hmm. that's why you you hate on other people because you think that you should be top and stuff. But see, I feel like Miss Fame thinks she's doing amazing because she looks amazing. Right. But looks can only get you so far. Clearly, Miss Fame. Yay. All right, so let's go Shiny. into uh, let's go into the <laughs> library, shall we? Mm -hmm. In the, uh -oh. the mini challenge. The <laughs> library is open. Let me grab that um book. I I was a little disappointed this season. They weren't funny. Some of them were kind of. Some of them were like on like like the ticklish side. They were like, oh yeah, that's kind of funny. And then some of them tried too hard to be mean, and then it just kind of was. Let like, me let me tell you who was not funny at all and fell very flat. Miss Fame. Well, she fell so flat that like I don't even think there's a word to describe how flat she was. She is a topic of so many conversations today. She is. Oh well, my god. It's because okay, when you do a read, like it's real quick and sharp, like. Miss Fame, we all know how she likes to talk. So she tried to almost explain her read, and it's like, we ain't got time for that. You're supposed to say it, do it, gut it, move on. She did a read monologue. She did a read monologue. <laughs> no, exactly. it was more like a soliloquy, where she was like an introvert monologue, and then she was like, oh, and here's the point. And everyone's like, everyone missed the point but you. Right. Yeah. Well, but Trixie killed it, though. Trixie, Trixie, did. Trixie did. did a great job. I thought Pearl actually did a pretty good job, too. <laughs> I, I want to know if she actually did one for Rue. Because when she went, RuPaul! And she, <laughs> RuPaul was like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, Satan. <laughs> and then they cut it. It was like, the library's now closed. But I wonder if she actually got that out and, and if they just edited that out. I know, too, now. Like, oh, I didn't yeah. even think about that. I just thought it was kind of like a throwaway joke. But yeah. if there is out there, I would like to know. It, Show us. And it was it, it was very fitting because her and Rue, Pearl and Rue, have kind of gone clashed head to little. head and clashed mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I I want oh I wonder what Pearl has to say. What, um, what do you think she has to say? <laughs> do you have any? What how what first, would she? Say? How would you read RuPaul? Though? I mean, he looks like a giant penis, but that's just 
No one? No one sees that? He's tall and bald. Isn't that like a running joke for like people who look like me? See, I would have lost the challenge. I'm sorry. I'm what is right. wrong with being tall and slightly bald? Yeah, yeah. bald. I mean, I'm short and What's wrong with bald. looking like a penis? <laughs> no? We all know where your mind is. Oh, I, <laughs> I want to say, though, the best read to me was after... Um, after Trixie won the challenge, and they're like, you won a $500 certificate to Sequence Queen. And then Violet goes, thank God. I was like, <laughs> yes. That was my favorite read of the it's episode. It's like, no one wants that prize. <laughs> um, but I mean, overall, I, I just kind of felt like, uh, it was okay. Like it, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't as like. It wasn't like Juju B, where like that season where she like literally got everybody, and it was just like one after the other, after the other, after the other. But, oh, that was Juju B's dance. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sure, sure. That's that's how she did it. And uh, <laughs> Katia was funny too. But yeah. we, I mean, we all knew that she was going to be funny. Yeah. Uh, Kennedy Davenport, she was pretty good. Yeah. I but don't know. Uh, I'm losing. I'm losing on the gender team gender a little bit. Oh, Ginger no, was good too. She was good. Oh, she was I just want to make this on. note. This week I love Kennedy. Last week I hated her. This week I love her. Oh, and this week's look how we're being so swayed. I, I mean, it's just like fickle, I said. It's fickle. her and Jasmine Masters when they're together. I just can't. I can't handle it. <laughs> Is it too much? Such a it's fickle too much. Romeo. <laughs> it's too much. So um, later on in, in the episode, uh, Kennedy brings up the fact about being a full-time female impersonator and using drag to pay the bills. Uh, um, question to you guys, because I mean, I know a lot of queens who switch over to a full-time gig mm -hmm. as far as like giving 100% to, to drag and only having an income for drag. And I do know some who have like side jobs and then they do drag on the side. How do you guys feel about, about full-time drag impersonation? Is it, do you think it's as hard as, as Kennedy says it is or you know, do you think, ooh, you should probably just use that as a side gig? Like, what are your thoughts? I know a lot of full-time drag impersonators, and um, you have to work your way up. You have mm -hmm. to do the competitions. You have to do the free gigs. You have you to have pay to your dues. You have to pay your dues. Yeah. Um, and most of the ones that I know that work full-time perform 12 times out of the week, go to one club to another, to another, to another, and they still have to have shared living situations and mm -hmm. do all this stuff. Drag's not cheap. And you're not um, going to get make yeah. all the money you want unless you are a name. Yeah. And now, thanks to RuPaul's Drag Race, it's even harder to get your name out there because they all just want the, what, the, 60 queens that have been the through the cycle? Queens. Yeah. 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 I do think that, that Drag Race does give them a platform to up their booking fee, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as I absolutely. have experienced. But, um, but hearing Kennedy say, you know, that the bookings are very scarce. And, and I, I get that because, you know, you have such an influx of queens who are now trying to do this because of Drag Race. Yeah. And not every club and bar can have 20 queens performing every month. Um, can and they, though? I mean, that I know, would, that would be a very long show. Yeah. And, and of course, everyone wants a steady gig, but it's, it's definitely hard. And I've, I've seen people who have worked very, very hard before they got on Drag Race or even to get on Drag Race and even after Drag Race. Yeah. You know, you have to really, really work hard. And yeah. there's now there's so many other ways to become relevant as a drag queen. Miss Fame wasn't a club queen. She mm -hmm. got her on social media. I don't know if she had another job. She was a makeup artist and then did yeah. social media. Yeah. Now you have to kind of, you have to find your way on RuPaul's Drag Race in order to be a successful drag queen every every week. And then there's ones that like TP Lords in Miami and like, uh, Calypso Monroe and all these other drag queens that um, aren't known, but in their cities and stuff are very well known. So yeah. they're doing it for well, full time. Well, it's like any entertainment position; it's about the hustle, and yeah, it's going to be a constant struggle. So yeah, I yeah, definitely you can do it full time, but there's like a handful of people that can. Yes. <laughs> well, we all know now. Kennedy Davenport has no problem paying them bills now because she is trotting across the globe, doing every death drop, high kick, split, jump, everything, and getting those coins. So I, I good, really do good. hope her little Hats Richard off. gets as popular as uh, Jinx Monroe's uh, little Edie, and she just gets booked off of doing that because you know that's Jinx Monsoon. Jinx Monsoon. Sorry. <laughs> what did I say? Mon Monroe, but it's Jinx okay. You gave her a new name. It's fine. Um, so moving on to the uh, main challenge, um, which was the John Waters uh, screen test. 
and the Ugly Dress Challenge. Um, so John Waters, very big time director, worked <gasps> with the <laughs> original uh, drag superstar, as RuPaul uh, mentioned, Divine. I thought this was a, another fun acting challenge, but of course it was another acting challenge. And right. I'm starting to see that fans are not keen on these acting challenges because you got to be talented in order to do an acting challenge. That's true. I, and yeah, the point is like you would be a fan of these, mm -hmm. these challenges if they were executed amazingly and yeah. they weren't. <laughs> this was my all-time favorite challenge in RuPaul Drag Race history. <laughs> I just want to say that out there. Yeah. But every season has too much of some channel what, challenge. What was it, Raja's season? Every other challenge was a sewing challenge. Yeah. Um, besides like last season and the season before that, it just, it's just a pattern. They have to come up with new challenges to mm -hmm. be relevant and stuff like that. So yeah. they're like, oh, I think this one is more about the education of drag this season because of the whole transgender issue that happened last season. So they're like, okay, let me bring up relevance to history, history, mm -hmm. as they say it. Yeah. So we can show what drag is opposed to just these fun little niche games so we don't get in trouble anymore. Yeah. But, but John was... Waters is like an amazing challenge yeah. in itself. And, and also Divine was, you know, a, a, one of the, the queens that came into the mainstream before Rue. Before yeah. Rue, there was Divine. So mm -hmm. it's another drag history lesson for, for those who Absolutely. are donning those wigs and heels and not knowing the people that came before. Um, so what did you guys think of the, the screen tests uh, that happened? I loved it. 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 Every aspect of it. I loved every single one of them. This is the first. This is the first challenge that I can even say the bottom group. If this was the first week, and they and everyone, they would have still been in the top. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I I like. Well, you know what? I didn't like the poo one. I didn't like. I mean, the poo the poo one was worse when you juxtapose them to every other one. But it's still, I loved it. I loved them all. I just, I just I loved felt like it was like lacking style. some kind of energy, you know, that I don't, I, I, I'm not quite sure why I didn't like it because. You had, you know why? Is because they could not get out of their head. There's yeah. so much that they had to think about. They had to think about the lines. They had to think about the song. They had to yeah. think about their character. And when you don't go into these challenges just having fun, yeah. then that, that's an issue. You have to go in there with, a clear determination of what, how you're gonna play this character and just yeah. simply have fun with it. Let me refer what I was saying. I loved Violet in the Pooh one because to me it was like Violet is now finally coming out of her shell, being mm -hmm. a nicer person. When it comes to Miss Fame and, and uh, Pearl, you know what, girl bye. I, I actually liked well, girl bye. Girl bye. Uh, I actually liked Kennedy uh, and uh, Katia. Mm -hmm. I thought the the Cha Cha Hills was hilarious. <laughs> I thought they both played well with each other. I thought yeah. they both played their characters well, um, and they were both funny in their own right. Yeah, and I, they played to their strength. That's they what did. I was gonna say they because did. initially Katia was like, I want to be the one singing Cha Cha, uh -huh. but then Kennedy was like, Oh girl, you can't sing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. So I I think it was a great, and you saw how you know. There was a reason why Kennedy wanted those cha-cha heels. Mm -hmm. And she got to showcase her dancing just a little bit. I don't know if you guys picked mm -hmm. up on that, but yeah. she did a few pot de kickball changes. Yeah. And Katya was, was just funny. And also got to those show off her balls. dancing. Woo. Yeah. The full eagle. Oh, full eagle. Spread eagle. Amazing. Full e spread eagle. Oh my God, these terms, they're whole, killing did me Did you today. just say a whole eagle? I said full eagle. <laughs> A spread eagle? <laughs> spread eagle. I don't have a vagina. I, I don't know these terms. Okay. Oh, well. boy. I do think <laughs> that, that Trixie uh, and Ginger, they did okay, but I do think that Trixie could have... Trixie has a character in, in herself. Like, she yeah. could have been over the top and bigger than life. But you know what? I think if it was two over the top and bigger than life characters, it would have been overdone and annoying. I think it was a good mixture. I think it showed Keisha Ginger more than Trixie, but I... I, I think they both killed it. But I think it could have been a match. This was, yeah. this was Two campy, you know, yeah. this was a campy thing. Who sings about eggs? Like, I mean, play it up. Have yeah, fun with I it. Yeah, I feel like John Waters is overacting yeah. in that. And you can, you got to go balls deep in it and just yeah. go for it. I don't know. That's my, that's my take on it. So, and then we had the, the ugly dress challenge, which I thought the only person that had the most idiot's dress is really between Ginger and, uh, and Violet. That I thought their Katia's dress, was, dress like, was hideous. Uh, mm. 
It was hideous. It but was I, heavy. But I agree with with John. Like some hippie girl in Brooklyn would love that True. dress. Absolutely. Like yeah, absolutely I could see right. someone wearing that dress with a cute little belt mm -hmm. and like a little cowboy hat and cowboy boots and still being able to rock it. But in the yeah. same in the same breath, you can say that about Ginger's dress because Ginger's dress was really well made. People love the color green. It was well made, yeah. but that is ugly. That isn't well. Ugly you know, color. I feel like Peggy from Married with Children would wear that and rock yes. it. Yes. You know. Yeah. Of course. Um, Mr. Mark. Miss Fame, that was actually a gorgeous piece in yeah. my Beautiful, opinion. Beautiful, and she yeah. was painted to the gods. Yeah, and I that would have uh, that would have won if you see that would have won like the runway challenge. Yeah. if she would have made it in the first few episodes. It was beautiful. And and Pearl the same way. That was not an, an ugly dress. That was actually a, a very stylish hip dress. One for of my me. favorites on Pearl. Yeah. Do you think they're afraid to go too ugly? Do, do you think that was why? You can't, you can't be afraid to to do. But, to anything. But maybe that's why they were on the bottom because they were take too a afraid. Risk. I don't think, I just think it was up to interpretation. I yeah. think Pearl, maybe, uh, I think Pearl, she has the issue that a lot, a lot of the earlier challenges get rid of her runway looks mm -hmm. because for her death look, mm -hmm. um, she had that death thing, death by tanning. So she got rid of her tanning thing for the musical challenge and for other looks like that, she gets rid of them for previous challenges. So yeah. she has to come up with something new on the runway. But you gotta be prepared. Like that's that's being a professional drag queen female yeah. impersonator. You never know what's gonna happen. You could get somewhere and a button pops on a dress or you know, your wig is misplaced or yeah. something happens. You have to think quick in order to do that. So if I would have done this challenge, I would have looked back to my first time in drag pulled that dress out of the shoebox, not <laughs> ironed it, and worn that on the runway, because everyone's first go. time in drag is busted. <laughs> Oh not my everybody. God, I really want to know what it looks like <laughs> Can so you bring bad. a photo of that in next week? I can next probably week. find it. Ne next week, you will see that. Probably that would be it. amazing. So, <laughs> uh, so then we had the question that everyone cringes about, which is, who should be sent home? And everybody, hands down, with the exception of Violet and Miss Fane, said Miss Fane. Yeah. And I have to agree. She's resting on pretty, and I don't like queens who rest on pretty. You can be a beautiful drag queen, but it's like, what else can you bring to the table? But you know what? The thing about Miss Fame that I think is what kept her is, yes, she was resting on pretty, but unlike the other queens that rested on it, she was trying so goddamn hard to do everything else. She just lacks, like if she would have been in the performance circuit and she would have taken an acting class and maybe a few other classes and had a little bit more originality to her, she would have gone far because she really wanted it. But, but when you get a, a, a position like this, wouldn't you have gone and gone done and that? Gone and done that. that improv class. I, I will, I cannot stress this enough. This is season seven of RuPaul's Drag Race. There are no surprises as to what is going to be expected right. of you. So you know there's gonna be an acting challenge, you know there's Absolutely. gonna be dance, you know there's gonna be sewing. Like, get yourself together yeah, to make yourself the best that you can be. I don't think they give the queens times enough from the point where they know they're gonna be on the show to going there. Cause I've heard it's, oh, I'm on the show, I have a week to pack everything and go. But in my mind, if I knew my my ultimate, my ultimate like level is to get on RuPaul's Drag yeah. Race, to 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 sh to show myself, I would have done it. Yeah. But you, well, you if you're know, submitting, go to drag boot camp. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you said it. So, um, who? I have forgotten the winner. Who won? Ginger. Mitch. Remember? Ginger. That's yeah. right. Ginger did win. Well, that's why I didn't pay attention because I heard it last night and then I didn't pay attention to when I watched it. So, <laughs> congrats, Ginger, for winning yet again. Um, <laughs> on to this lip sync. Uh, where uh, Demi Lovato was also the special guest judge and they uh, performed her song, uh, which I love this song, mm -hmm. uh, by the way. Um, how did you, Demi. what did yeah, you guys think too. about, um, and she was very happy to be there. She's been mm -hmm. wanting to do it for a long time, yeah. Uh, which, yeah. Um, so how did you guys feel about the lip sync? I felt it was a little dead in the face. I just kept looking at their faces like, do something, move. Did you guys just have Botox? Move, move, move. You know, yeah. like I, 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 I felt it was flat. This yeah. is this is disclaimer. I love Pearl and I love what she's been putting out lately, and I do think she's phenomenal. However, based on the lip sync, both bitches should have gone home. I I, I just feel like Pearl did a better job with the lip sync. I think she embodied the song, and for me, I feel like there is a sense that you have with the song. And if you can embody that, then you can. Then it's going to be a great performance, lip sync. You're, and I think that Miss Fame just kind of tapped around, and she was like, "I'm pretty in my big, un ill-fitting dress, and I'm just going to serve it face-wise yeah. and do it." Absolutely right. 
However, it does remind me a lot with Honey Mahogany and ah, I always forget Vivian her name. Panay. Vivian Panay to the to the Britney Spears song. One of them, one she could have embodied it, but it was just it was hard to watch that lip sync. It was really just hard to watch it. Yeah. No one honed it. No one was like, the only part I liked is when they both flipped each other off because I was like that was well deserved for both of them. Right. Yeah. Well, in the end, uh, Miss Fame got sent home. She sashayed away, and Pearl is yet again saved. Uh, but Pearl, let's stop coasting because we know that you feel like you're coasting in this competition, so hopefully you'll pick it up. Um, but we will be right back, and we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with your fan questions. Stay tuned. There's more RuPaul's Drag Race after show coming up. Just in case you missed it live. In case you missed it live. Just in case you missed it live. Oh, just in case you missed it live. In case you missed it live, I'm doing something right now. <laughs> so we're all super excited. Okay. Yes. 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 So this is dancing. So what too. would that be like a seven? <laughs> I cannot. I literally cannot. You guys have got to get it together. <laughs> Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Hate the contract you didn't get. He's a coward. Mm -hmm. He's a giant chicken shit. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's gonna be like hurricane whoa. Watch out for those girls. Um, they are gagging them. Hold the phone. Hold on. Bro. Ben, the more brutal you are, the more power you have. Right. That was sexy. It was hot. It was heated. I was into it. You are gonna be the most high-paid hooker in the world. <laughs> Go ahead and invite your friends and everybody. Tell your mama. Tell them don't head turn the stove off and get up on the computer so we can get <laughs> on the screen TV. Thank you again for joining us, and until next week, bye bye. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are still in the midst of the RuPaul's Drag Race After Show right here on the stream.tv. If you are joining us live, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as a reminder, don't forget, if you are a huge fan of RuPaul's Drag Race and you're in the Los Angeles area or will be visiting, RuPaul's Drag Con will be May 16th through 17th. So make sure you get your tickets today. Because trust me, these queens are coming for those tickets. And you don't want to miss this huge event that's happening right here in LA makes 16 through the 17th. All right, so what are the kids buzzing about in the chat room, Anastasia? Oh, let's 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 go there. Um, there's been a lot of <laughs> there's been a lot of talk about. Uh, I could see the somebody said I can see the emotion in in, in Miss Fame's face. To me, I couldn't. I, that's just that's I couldn't just, either. That's just me. Like I said, um, Miss Fame was more talented. She wanted it, and she was trying every damn yeah. Week. But you know, she was she wasn't. Um, I mean, there's if a lot of talk it, about Miss Fame Stevie right Wonder. now. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of talk about Miss Fame being plucked from obscurity and uh, you know stuff like that. Uh, but we do have somebody that agrees with us. Uh, Jason Caracas. Caceres. Caceres. There you go. Uh, said the lip sync was horrible. Yeah, I get it. I can't say <laughs> things sometimes. All right, well, uh, <laughs> we have a tweet from It's Raimi who says, wouldn't it have been awesome if all three who oh. lip sync for their life? I guess that's all three, Violet, uh, Pearl, and Miss Fame, if they all had to lip sync for their life. I didn't think, yeah. I didn't think Violet would have been, uh, should have been in the bottom. I thought she no, did a great job. I think job. she did pretty good. So I thought the bottom two and were honestly, correct. And honestly, I think if it was Violet versus them, just based off Violet's lip sync for the for the airline challenge, mm -hmm. they would have, um, Miss Pearl and Miss Fame would have gone home. I don't think I would have been minded that seeing all three of them at the bottom just lip syncing for their life because I think that she would have gotten out of it. But I do think there was something severely lacking in the poo yes. scene. So I've... They didn't get it. They didn't yeah. play it up. They didn't play up the campiness. But Violet also had the best runway look for that challenge. And yeah. she did the best out of all three right. of them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at right third says, this season of RuPaul's Drag Race is pretty bad, proven by the fact that they can't read for shit. I love this mm. fucking season. 
I can't say it's bad. These queens, from a technical level, are amazing. Yes, it's kind of boring to watch sometimes when they read da 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 blah blah blah. But you know what? We can't all have Biancas and adores and. True. But pe but fans are having a very hard time with this season with it catching on. Like it, you know, Drag Race is something that everyone looks forward to every year. And I think this season, it's it's. It was like what the fourth, fifth mm -hmm. episode that people were like, oh, I like it now, you know. So it's yeah. it, this season is taking well, a bit longer. This is like the seven year itch, okay? It's like it's like it's like a relationship, mm -hmm. a marriage. You, you just you're getting a little, you know, you need a little spice things up. I don't think, yeah. I think it's yet. just every season they've had that one queen that everyone's been able to fall head over heels yeah. for, and. It, last season we had like four of them that yeah. everyone loved. So if you compare this season to last season, it's kind of hard because there's not a lot to fall in love with. Yeah. But if you think about it, they are really talented. They're they very are. talented. Yeah, I just don't think there's that shining star yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, at Demetrius asks, who do you want to see as a guest judge? I'm sorry, hands down, I would love to see Beyonce. Oh my god, I was gonna totally say <laughs> oh that. My god. The only issue is who would get the best lighting, Rue or Beyonce? Um, I think they could equally share it. Yeah, I think they could uh, share that. I really wanna see, and this is just from me being an asshole, Lindsay Lohan or Amanda Bynes. You want you want some you want a mess to I be want a, a, a judge mess. on Then Drag the Race. challenge has to be like some kind of TMZ yes. like parody. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> I want residuals if you put that as a challenge and use one of them. Well, just a ticket to drag. Well, first of all, good luck trying to get one of those heifers there True. in order to be I feel a judge. Like they could get Lindsay. They could get her, but could they keep her? Yeah. Probably not. I mean, she'll probably be three hours late and fucking trembling in. But you know, go but Lilo. She'll be there. Uh, yeah. Well, you. I was. I, was I want Tina Fey or Amy Poehler. Oh my Actually, god. Actually, I just changed my mind. I want one of them two as a. As, a as like a comedy show. challenge. Yeah, as a comedy challenge. I think they yeah. are, oh my God, they are amazing. Or Amy Poehler could come on and like do a smart girls challenge because that's mm -hmm. her platform, smart girls. Like, you know, show us your drag as a smart girl. And I think that Play would be cool. Play to the top of your yeah. intelligence, maybe an yeah. improv challenge. We yeah. haven't really had any improv challenges. No. That would be a great That'd idea too. Improv yeah. is such an awesome platform for drag queens. But can you imagine how queens. hard that would be, an improv challenge? Let's let's just talk about how that would go. It would, I don't know because improv, like even people who aren't naturally funny, play such a good straight man. I'm an improviser. Um, play such a good straight man that it can really showcase. Like Miss Fame could have probably been amazing in it because she's not naturally funny. But when people are trying to be an over character, yeah. having someone in their head is hilarious to watch. Yeah. Hmm. Shoot, why? Well, all right. Don't well, speaking me. of being in your head, we hope that for the rest of this week, we'll be in yours. Make sure you. Follow us, like us, make sure you subscribe to the stream.tv and throughout the week we want to hear your thoughts on this episode and the next episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. Make sure you use the hashtag RDR7AS. And before we head out, I know you guys have probably been wondering where Jay Rodriguez is. Right he is right here giving us resting bitch face, but not really. But he is <laughs> off, he is doing the whole LA audition thing and we wish him the best and hope that he lands the, I, I don't want to say good luck because I feel like that's bad. I want him to break all legs. Break every leg that you have. But Bitch <laughs> don't my look though. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, we will see you guys next week for another fabulous recap of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7. Ta-ta's for now. For a dragtastic morning, be sure to subscribe to RuPaul's Drag Race After Show on the stream.tv.